Your Uncanny LP site includes a really powerful way to get organizations and groups of users into the system. We made available an import tool that allows you to upload up to a thousand users at the same time, get them into WordPress, send them information about their accounts, update users if you choose to, as well as assign access to Learn Dash groups and courses. And all of that can be done as an administrator if you go into Users, and then import Learn Dash users. And this is a test system, so it might look a little bit different when you're doing this yourself. So, um, the very first thing that you'll see on the page are some instructions about what to do and what the steps are in the process. It's a good idea, especially if you're doing this for the first time, to read through these instructions in detail, take a look at what's on the different tabs, and even try with a sample file first, maybe just with one user or something. So on this page, we can see the first step is to review the Options tab right here. Then we would review the Email Settings tab here. Create a CSV file. Before you can upload, you'll need a CSV file, and it needs to be in a particular format. So down here, as well as in the Knowledge Base, and of course it's a good idea to check the, um, the Knowledge Base and um, this, the, the page of the course that this appears on as well, for information about what you can include in terms of the columns. So these columns are, some of them are required, some of them are optional. Um, the only two required fields are email and login. These cannot be changed either. If you're uploading an existing user, you cannot change email or login uh, using the CSV upload. It will throw an error for those users. So if they are existing users, then both of those fields would need to match what's in WordPress at the time. And if they're new, it would just set those. Um, anything else can be blank. If password's not populated, then it would just be generated automatically. If Learn Dash courses and Learn Dash groups columns are not populated, it will use the course and group settings that will be defined on the, the options tab in just a second. So I'll show you that. You can also leave these out. If the columns are left out entirely, then it just won't do anything with Learn Dash courses and groups. And you can use the tool as a generic importing tool um, for users by CSV file. So nothing to do with Learn Dash if those columns are out. But if they're included and they're populated, then we can add users to those courses and groups. And if you include the column headings, but nothing in the columns for them, then uh, we would add the users or the groups and the courses that are defined in the options tab. So role you can set, but it does default to subscriber, and we do strongly suggest that you only upload learners. Um, uploading administrators and group leaders can just, it, it can be done. It's just that um, we recommend there's a bit more oversight into adding those types of users. So it's a little safer if you add those types of users manually because they have more control and can see more information. So it's a good idea if you know explicitly how they've been set up and what's associated with them. First name and last name can be set, and then you can include any other um, metadata as well that would go in user meta. So just like you would with any other CSV upload tool for users, you can inclu include other meta values. The last step, of course, once you've got your CSV file prepared is to upload into WordPress. And then we would do some validation, let you know what's gonna happen, and then you can proceed with uploading into the system and sending emails as appropriate. So let's take a look at the options tab as that is the first step. What we can do here is control first what happens to users that already exist. So if there's a matching username and email address, do you want the plugin to update the users with the new information that's in there? or should it ignore those users entirely? So maybe you're not sure if there are duplicates and if they are, if there are, you don't wanna change them, but if there aren't, then you, um, then you do wanna add that information. So you can choose to update or ignore data for those users. Uh, you can set role here. Um, there's only one selection allowed. It does make things easier to manage that way. So just one role per user in the upload. Um, and normally that's going to be subscriber. That's what learners should be. And then here it's going to list the courses and groups that are in the system. And if you want to, for anyone that has a blank value in this column in the CSV file, if what you can do here is you can assign everyone matching that 
to a particular course in our group. So if I want everyone with a blank column for or a blank field for that column to go into course for screencast, I can do that here. And I can also do this with uh, sample learn dash group. So let me show you an example. This is a, a CSV file that's been set up. It's got a username and email field or column. Uh, there's some invalid data in here that I'm using. We'll see that at the time of validation and when the emails go out. First name, last name is set, password set, role set. But you can see for these uh, nine users, those columns are blank. And when we have the column headings, but blank fields for them, that means that they get added to whatever's set on this page. And the one at the bottom here, where these are defined, means that they'll get added to course with ID 1, 2, 3. Or, so course with ID 1, course with ID 2, course with ID 3, and group with ID 1, group with ID 2, group with ID 3. And I'll look at the IDs in just a second. So let me just save those changes really quickly. So I'm going to save that now that I've made modifications. Okay, so that's been saved. We've confirmed that. Just before any f I go any further, let's take a look very quickly at, uh, where is it? So I'm just going to open a new tab for this right now, and we'll go into e-learning. I just want to show you the, um, the courses then. So where would you get course IDs? It's going to be a little hard to see, but when I hover over them, there's a number that shows up. And you can't see it really in the address bar because I'm not capturing it in the screencast. But the URL for this course at the top, I'll paste it down here, is this. So this is the course ID. And it's the same thing when you edit groups. In the URL, um, when you go to edit the group, you'd see a post equals and then that ID. So that's the ID that goes here. All right, so if I go back now to this tab, I've set that, that I want to go those users to go in these courses and these groups. Um, next up, I want to set defaults for email settings. And again, this isn't necessarily something or things that you have to go through every time you're doing an upload, but certainly doing it once at least is a good idea. So let's go ahead and uh, say we want to send an email to new users, but not to uh, existing users. So, and you can send test emails too. So I'm just going to say welcome to, um, I'm going to call it uh, LP. And then in here I can say, um, hi, your user has been created with a username. And then I can put that in. The variables are over here on the left and password, and then I can put that variable in as well. All right, and then I can just say, please sign in at, and I'm going to use the login URL. I'll just copy that and paste it, oops, there. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. So then anyone that's created as part of this upload process will get an email with that information. And if I want to test that, actually I'm going to save it first. So let's save that. And I'll send a test email to myself. And uh, that's how you can get a sense of what that's going to look like. All right, so that is correct. Um, now, if everything's done, I'm happy with the defaults. I set up my sample file. I've saved it as a CSV file. So this is what I've saved now. Then at this point, I can go over to import users. So what I'll do from this tab then is validate what I've set. This is just for review purposes. So it's telling me, okay, from the options tab, this is what's going to happen to these users. They're going to be added to course for screencast, which is a closed course. If the, um, if the value is blank for the course column in the spreadsheet. And then it's also letting us know they'll also be enrolled in this course because it's open, which means accessible to everyone. So it doesn't really matter. They're going to get access to this one. Just, again, reminding you that it is open, so available to everyone. Default groups. So the groups that we set from the options tab, again, the subscriber role is going to be used if none is set. Uh, this is just confirming I did set um, an email for users that are new and updated users won't get an email. 
All right, so what I'm going to do now, and I could click any of these buttons to validate or change things. I'm going to click on Choose File. I'm going to uh, choose a file. The one I want to use is this one, and I will open that up and upload the file. So what's going to happen is this. So we've done an initial scan. This just happens before you import. And additional validation is done on import, so there might be slight deviations when you do the real import. So total users, there were 10. If we check back again, yes, there are 10. Uh, new users, nine. So one, one exists or there's a problem with one. So that's, it's not an existing user, so there's a problem with one. Um, and they have a, an invalid email address, which is correct. This one obviously is not a valid email address. Uh, courses or users with invalid course IDs. You can see these are definitely not valid. These are just ones that I threw in there. So it's seen that, that they're invalid. Um, so let's go down existing emails. There are none invalid. Okay, we've got that and we can see that there are invalid groups. So those records get ignored. And let's go ahead and perform the import. So we click this button. It's going to prompt you again just to say, you know, this is a very final process. You can't interrupt it. It will change things on the system. Make sure you're absolutely ready to proceed and know what's going to happen. So assuming that is the case, I can click on I'm ready to import. And make sure this stays open. It's going to be pretty quick with only 10 users, but it does cycle through a lot of functions. So if you have large sets of users, this can take a while. At the end of the import, you'll see a page like this with information about what happened. There was a small change on the test site while I did this. So the results here aren't quite valid um, because I had to change some email addresses, but um, it's still good to look at what happened and what would be, um, what would be reported on the confirmation page. So after the upload is completed, you'll get a list of results. So how many users were created, how many users were updated, how many emails were sent, and how many rows were ignored. So in this case, nine rows were ignored because um, I, I made some changes. And uh, But in as you're doing this on your own LP site, then the results would be valid and you'll be able to confirm all of this information. So make sure that this is correct and what you expected. You can always go into your list of users and take a look also before you do a real upload. That's why it is helpful to do a test first, just to uh, validate exactly what's gonna happen. Um, and so you're better aware when you start using you know, groups of hundreds of users potentially, what to expect and what's going to work and what's not. So hopefully this is helpful in getting you started with importing users by CSV file. It's definitely helpful if you're selling to organizations or if you want to make bulk updates to course enrollment or things like that. Do note, however, if you are making bulk updates, anything you're doing when you're importing users and making updates is going to add to what do they already have. So it's, it's going to change profile information. So anything in the user's profile will be updated, but in terms of course and group assignments, what's done here is cumulative. So whatever they already have, if they are, if they've already been assignment, assigned to courses or already assigned to groups, this won't change that. It will only add additional groups. There's no way to replace what's, whatever is already there. So it's just for adding new assignments, not for removing anything that currently exists. Anyway, hopefully this is helpful. Check out the, the rest of the content on this page so you better understand it and hopefully this helps you get users into your LP site. Thanks.